Oh hey, what's up chitheads? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be checking out the Sonata Sabre. The nice folks over at Sonata sent me this bike to do a review on. If you guys have been around the channel for a while, you might remember about a month or so ago, I did a review on the Sonata Herald, which is the step-through version. So today, we're gonna to be unboxing this, putting it together, we're gonna to go over the specs and features, we're gonna take it for a ride, and then we'll wrap it up with a nice little bow on the end, let you know about some special offers you can use to save some money if you wanna buy a Sonata Sabre. We're just gonna have a good time all around. So you know what, that's enough small talk. What do you say we go ahead and get right into it? See this box, it looks like it took a little bit of damage along the way. Hopefully there's no damage internally, but just wanted to point that out ahead of time. Tail Happy likes to kick the boxes and tear them apart. I've seen other people use power tools, but have you ever seen anyone use a lightsaber? Let's see if this lightsaber can open this box. What do you say? It's called special effects look into it. Hey, it turns out opening the front of the box is actually a pretty easy strategy to open these things up. So let's just slide this right out. Wow, look how easy that is. I think I'm going to start opening all these boxes this, this way going forward. Working our way around. There's no shortage of zip ties with the Sonata bikes, that's for sure. I see the handlebars. All right, the good news is where the box took a hit and I could see the piece underneath. Everything looks fine. We're almost there, guys. This box here, these looks like this must be the accessories, pedals, power supply, and so forth. We'll go through that in a little bit. Now we've given ourselves a little working room. It's time to start putting the bike together. I'm gonna start by putting these handlebars on. Tighten the bolts down on the headset here. Let's see what's in this box here. Here we have a charger. Ooh. Nice little Allen wrench kit. Comes with a instruction manual. If I could read, I'd probably check that out. Here you have your black Welgo pedals and a couple of wrenches here. And the wrenches are actually what I'm getting at because we're gonna put on the front wheel now. Take out this axle that comes in there. This is put in place there so the fork does not bend during shipping. So you can see this washer on the top here has a little tab on it and that needs to go within the, in the gap in the dropout. These pedals are specific to each side of the bike. So just go gently and start screwing it in. And then we got the right one. So the pedal on the other side is a reverse threaded pedal. The nice thing is when they send you these tools, typically they're the tools you're gonna need for the install and not just random sizes. So it makes it pretty easy. About 95% of the way done. Man, I have to say I like the way it looks like this without the uh, rear rack. But we're going to go ahead and put on the rear rack for demonstration purposes, but what do you guys think? What do you think it looks like without the rear rack? Little pro tip, and I've seen this on multiple bikes now, derailleur guards end up getting bent during shipping and pushing against the derailleur. So if you see that it's touching the derailleur, pull it back a little bit. And that's what I had to do here. So make sure the derailleur guard is not touching the derailleur. Looks like this actually broke off during shipping. So we were not gonna be installing the rear tail light. You can see it broke. So unfortunately this box did take a hit along the way and the rear tail light is a casualty. So we won't be connecting that this time. Here you guys have it, the completed Sonata Sabre. Now, one of the first things you noticed when I looked at these bikes, both of the Sonata bikes, is they have a very nice 
high quality finish that really kind of set them apart from the competitors. These paint jobs are really like high gloss paint. Looks like a very good quality paint job. The graphics, everything looks like it's a very nice fit and finish on these bikes. Let's go ahead and go over the components of the Sabre. For starters, this has a 1000 watt brushless geared hub motor and this is rated at 95 newton meters of torque and that is paired with a 48 volt 28 amp controller which is capable of putting out a maximum of about 1344 watts so this is a pretty powerful bike and that's coupled with a 48 volt 21 amp hour battery which equates to 1008 watt hours of capacity so this is on the upper end of capacity, especially for a 48 volt bike. Manufacturers all kind of exaggerate the ranges you can get on their bikes, but I would estimate on this bike, you could realistically get 30 to 40 miles fairly easy. This has a aluminum frame, comes with front and rear fenders. These are plastic fenders. And I like the plastic fenders better because inevitably when you're riding over things with these fat tires, you're gonna pick up rocks and things and it's gonna hit the fenders and the metal fenders tend to make noise where the plastic ones are quieter. This has 26 by 4 inch Yang fat tires. This bike comes equipped with a Shimano 7 speed drivetrain with a 7 speed cassette, 7 speed tourney derailleur, 48 tooth front chain ring, 180 millimeter mechanical disc brakes front and rear. It's one of the things on this bike I'd like to nitpick. I do wish this bike had hydraulic disc brakes. Nice sturdy rear rack. And this is rated at a capacity of 25 kilograms, which equates to be about 55 pounds. There's a rear taillight on this bike. Unfortunately, as you saw earlier in the video, this one was damaged during shipping. Nice cushy seat. For reference, this is what a six foot two rider looks like on the Sonata. Sonata states that this bike will fit a rider from five foot six to six foot six. This bike has a weight capacity of 330 pounds. And another thing I do like about this bike, it has a smaller form factor from a lot of the other fat tire e-bikes I've tested, as well as this being a lighter bike. This is a 78 pound bike, and I've found that it's significantly easier to move around than, than a lot of the other bikes I've tested. This bike has front suspension, it has your compression settings here on the right, and your preload on the left. See here on the battery, the battery has this master power switch here, you can turn it on and off. If you want to check the capacity of the battery from the battery itself, hold the power button down and you can see it shows you the state of the charge. Here is your charge port. This bike comes with a 2 amp charger. Since this is a 48 volt, 21 amp hour battery, divide 21 by 2 amps and that will take approximately 10 and a half hours from a completely dead battery to a full charge. If you want to remove the battery from the bike, simply use the key, insert it here and you can turn it and remove the battery from the frame. Now this can come in handy if you'd like to charge your battery in a separate room or perhaps if you want to move the bike and you make the bike a little lighter you can remove the battery pack and then move the bike separately. It makes it a little easier to handle. Up here on the cockpit of the bike, this bike has, comes equipped with these nice soft faux leather grips. I like the support for your palm here, it makes for a nice comfortable riding position. Um, it has these unbranded mechanical disc brake handles. Handles feel nice and solid. This bike has a bell here nice and loud so and everybody's favorite seven shimano seven speed shifter i used to despise the shifter but i've grown to i've grown to like it it's the only thing the only downfall of this shifter is that it's just big it's bulky and it's not very aesthetically pleasing but it functions very well so here is your display this bike comes equipped with a very simple display I'm going to go ahead and show you how it works. To turn on the bike, you're going to hold down the M button here. And that's going to turn on the bike. And it's going to show you here, this is all your basic information. It has your battery readout, the odometer, your speedometer. It has your watt output meter. I really like this. So when you're riding the bike, it shows you how many watts you're outputting. It shows you what pedal assist level you're in. And to toggle through the pedal assist, you just press the up or down buttons here. And there's five pedal assist levels. This bike also has turn signals. Not only does this bike have a bell, it has a horn as well. So this is a simple display. One other thing this bike has that I haven't seen on many other bikes is this has a kill switch. So if you're riding and you want to cut off the power, you just press this red button here and it'll cut off the power. And to turn on and off the headlight, you're gonna hold the up arrow button here for a few seconds and then it'll turn on and off the front headlight. If you want to engage walk mode, hold the down button for a few seconds and then it'll start moving the bike forward slowly. 
What do you say we go to the fun part and take it for a ride? Come on guys, let's go. Hey, what's up guys? We are out on the Sonata Sabre. And first thing we're gonna do is go over the pedal assist settings on this bike. So we're in pedal assist one and pedal assist one gives you power up to about five miles an hour. So pedal assist one is pretty slow. Pedal assist two goes up to 12 and three is gonna go right up to about 17. 23, 24 and pedal assist four and pedal assist five is gonna go all the rest of the way which should be a top speed of 28, let's see. Yep, we got 28. Typically, I end up liking pedal assist three on most of these bikes. Gives you a more natural feeling without feeling like you're getting too much assistance and it's jerking you around. Pedal assist three feels pretty natural. As I've tested more of these bikes, I can appreciate the way Sonata does their pedal assist a smoother delivery than a few of the other bikes I've tested. This is rated at 1000 watts, but this controller is a 48 volt, 28 amp controller, which means it can put out a peak of about 1350 watts. This e-bike feels a little more powerful than most of the ones. So overall, that's one of the things that stands out with the Sonata bikes, is they're a smoother power delivery, they're quiet, and it just seems like they put more effort into their frame, the color schemes and paint jobs on their frames than other brands. I do enjoy the Sonata bikes, and one of the things I do like they're not, the frames are not as big as the other frame, other bikes that you see in the market. So these feel more nimble to me so I can get on these and maneuver these bikes around easier than some of the bigger 26 by four inch fat tire models. It's been raining recently. And this is one of the areas I like to showcase the usefulness of these fat tires because you can just glide over rougher terrain like this because you have that nice big contact path of the tire so you tie, that enables you to glide over the top of the surface without sinking down into the rocks or obstacles you're on. And right here, we're gonna go over these rocks and the railroad tracks. You can see, it makes easy work of the rocks. I did that on my other bike that has a 29 inch by 2.3 inch tire, and it really slows down. But with these fat tires, you can just glide right over the top. So these fat tires make for a great all around riding tire. You can do gravel, sand, dirt, asphalt, you name it. They just come out of downside though, uh, which is not so much of an issue when you have an electric bike because they do create excess drag, but since we have an electric bike, the motor helps with that. So if you're in for a cruiser style bike, these fat tires are a great, great combination for your typical electric bike. And another benefit is, since you're running these tires at a lower pressure, I have 15 pounds of pressure in the tires right now, that acts as some additional shock absorption. The fat tires also help smooth out the ride a little bit. This being a hardtail bike, it still has an acceptable ride in my opinion with the fat tires, as long as you don't overinflate them. Here's what a six foot two rider looks like mounting the Sonata Sabre. See, it's not so bad for me, but keep in mind if you're shorter, you may want to opt for the step through option or you just have to get used to leaning the frame over more to get on the bike. And here's what you're going to look like riding around on a Sonata Sabre. Yeah, I look like a pretty cool dude right now, huh? Check it out. Yeah, we're looking pretty sharp on our Sonata Sabre, aren't we? Pretty cool. Now being a hardtail, it does have no suspension in the rear, but a hardtail also makes the bike a bit more nimble than a full suspension counterpart, and it's significantly lighter. And I do notice the weight savings when I'm riding this bike around. It definitely feels lighter than a full suspension variants. I do appreciate that. This frame's also not as big as a lot of the full suspension 26 by four inch fat tire bikes. So, Having a smaller bike is more nimble and it comes with some weight benefits. Let's go ahead and try the top speed on this bike. I'm in pedal assist five now on the highest gear and let's see. We're at 28 already, no problem. 29. Let's see if we can hit 30. I'm cranking away here, guys. Looks like we got 29.7. I have hit 30 on this bike before in different scenarios, but today is not my day. And you definitely feel that in the higher pedal assist levels. You can see the wattage read out here. This thing gets cooking pretty quick. 
So as far as power goes, power is not an issue on the Sonata Saber. This thing's moving along good. All right, so what do you say we do the planks? High speed planks, guys? <laughs> okay, this is scary. Okay, that was scary. High speed planks are optional with the Sonata Saber. All right, we've done a little bit of trail riding now. Let's, let's take the Sonata Saber out on the streets for a bit. Like I said a few times now, this bike is pretty powerful and we'll have no problem keeping up with traffic on a you know, moderate speed limit street, which makes this bike a good option for a commuter bike or you know, a get around town bike. You don't have to buy these bikes just for one purpose. Part of the fun of these bikes is when you first get them, you kind of think like, I'm gonna use it for one thing. And then after you have them for a while, you realize that you can use these bikes for all sorts of things. I had a good stretch of um, riding my bike to the gym for probably four months straight. So I saved myself an absolute ton of money on gas and uh, got myself some exercise in the morning as well. So these bikes are very useful. I'm cruising right along, 22 miles an hour, no problem. So I do, I am a pedaler, and that's what's nice with um, bikes with frames this size is you can get an ergonomic pedal stroke. You know, some of the smaller e-bikes, you're not gonna be able to extend your knee very well when you do it, when you're pedaling. It's not gonna be an issue on this bike for most size riders. I think this bike says it fits up to 6.5 riders, so this bike will fit a variety of riders. So just starting off here, pedal assist four, these things accelerate really well. Gives you that torque to get from that zero to 20 pretty quick, especially when you're pedaling. Woo. You can see here, I'm keeping up with traffic to an extent. That's enough boring old street riding. What do you say we go back onto the trails here? You're not gonna get a bike like this to ride around on the street, are you? Just on the street, that is. What I like so much about these fat tires is you can go almost anywhere. So if you like exploring, you're gonna love a Sonata Saber. Check out all the little back alleys your town has to offer. Oh, here we go. Little roller coaster section here. This bike has a relatively big battery, so 21, 48 volt, 21 amp hour. So that's about 1,008 watt hours. So the range is gonna vary so greatly on these bikes that it's really hard to give some people an estimate because if you're riding this bike on pedal assist two, you're gonna to get tons of range. You'll probably get 50 miles or so. But if you're riding this bike on pedal assist three or four or five, you're gonna dip into that range quite a bit. So this thing can put out a peak of 1300 watts. So if you have this thing on pedal assist four or five and you're putting out 1300 watts, you can go through this battery in less than an hour. So it's really hard to give uh, accurate range estimates on these bikes, but I'd say if you're moderately riding pedal assist three, not using the throttle constantly, you could probably get a range of 30, 35 miles on this bike. You could get 40 as well if you're riding more conservative and you're gonna get significantly less if you're riding more aggressive. That being said, the 48 volt, 21 amp hour is a adequate size battery. And that's, that's more on the bigger size of batteries these bikes have to offer. So we're just doing some trailblazing on the Sonata Sabre. Check it out, guys. You like doing this type of stuff? <laughs> it's such a say, it's a bit spooky not being able to see the trail and everywhere because it's so grown over. It's just another thing I love about these types of bikes. You can just have the freedom to go in so many different types of locations. Now, as a matter of fact, you can probably get yourself into some locations on this bike. You probably shouldn't. So you have to use some discretion as well, but for demonstration purposes in this video, check it out, guys. Just some of the things you can do on your Sonata bike. Now, I'm gonna tell you guys, I'm probably gonna be regretting riding through these weeds and everything because I can already feel my shins itching quite a bit so <laughs> don't recommend doing this on your own. These are just some of the sacrifices I do to test these bikes for you guys. So I mentioned a few times this is a hardtail bike comes with its pros and cons but one of the pros is it makes this bike very nimble. You can just zip around back and forth on this bike faster than you can on a full suspension bike that's a little more cumbersome. So if you don't have a significant amount of rough terrain 
the hardtail to me is not really much of a uh, not much of a disadvantage because with these fat tires it's going to soak up quite a bit of the bumps and you're going to get a lot more maneuverability out of the hardtail hey guys i'm way down here so this bike is equipped with 180 millimeter mechanical disc brakes well i definitely prefer hydraulic disc brakes i'm going to get up to 20 miles an hour and then go ahead and panic stop Let's see this bike has no problem stopping. One thing I do notice with the mechanical disc brakes is you just have to pull the handles a little harder than you do with hydraulic. This bike is a seven speed setup. It has equipped with a seven speed Shimano tourney derail derailleur and the seven speed Shimano shifter that you're gonna see on pretty much every e-bike. I used to really not like this shifter, but honestly, it's very, it's very functional. You, it has a trigger shifter for upshifting, but if you wanna downshift, Look how fast you can downshift. You can downshift all seven gears in just one push of the, the shifter. So, although I don't think it's the best looking shifter, it works fine. All right, guys, time for the hill test. This is the pretty steep hill. As a matter of fact, on a few e-bikes, I can't even really get up this hill without pedaling really hard. So I don't know what grade it is because I'm not a nerd, but here it goes, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and downshift. I'm gonna start off in PAS3. You know, steepness, unfortunately, never comes across in videos, so you're just going to have to take my word for it. Yeah, three's struggling, so we're going to click it up to five, and we're doing it, but I'm telling you, it's a, this is a very steep hill. You would not want to be doing this on a regular bike, I'll tell you that much. But we're making a fairly easy work of it on the Sonata Sabre. You make sure if you cross anyone, just tell them you're in really good shape. Hello. And there we have it, guys. Successful hill test with the Sonata Sabre. Do a little bit of downhill on the uh, Sonata Sabre. What do you say? Oh, yeah. No, I'm sorry, you guys can't have this one. If you want to buy one, you can use coupon code STC100 to save $100 off the purchase of your own Sonata Sabre. Oh yeah, my friend Bruce wanted to say hi. He loves cows, so. So there you have it, that's the Sonata Sabre. Some things I really like about this bike, I really like the 1000 watt motor. It puts out about 1350 watts peak. It's nice and quiet. Got a big 1008 watt hour battery. It feels very nimble. I like the fit and finish. The paint job on this bike is awesome. Some things I'm not too fond of with this bike. It has 180 millimeter mechanical disc brakes. I like to see them switch over to hydraulic disc brakes. But all in all, this bike is a good value. Right now, I believe this bike sells for $13.99. But if you use coupon code STC100, you can save an additional $100 off that. So I believe this bike is going to cost you right around $12.99, which I think is a fair price for this bike. However, if you don't like the Sabre, you can check out the other offerings they have at Sonata Bikes and see if there's something there that suits you. One thing I would like to see in the future from them, I'd like to see the same form factor with hydraulic brakes and possibly switching to a torque sensor. I think that'd be really cool. So hopefully we'll see that in the future. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Ooh, I touched the cow. I did it.